Good day, guys. Welcome, guys. It's the um, um, it's the Q and A. It's the Q and A, the weekly Q and A, the weekly Q and A, where I answer your questions. So, um, for again to get your question answered, is very simple. You head to the website halfoffootballhot.com. Scroll down, put in your name and your email, and you can ask whatever question you want, either football or non-football related. So, without or spending too much time, let us ride through. So. From Pimp Juice, hey HH, can you make a best youth player rankings featuring the best 21 and under players so we know who to look out for? Sure. Uh, so something that I've actually been, been thinking of, 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 of doing, specifically looking at what um, Asensio, um, what's it called, um, Mbappe, Dembele, and so forth, and seeing who are actually the best young players, and if we're to rank them, how we rank them. So it's definitely something that I will be looking into doing, so watch this space. Um, Rai Gomez, hey HH, what do you think is a problem with the DCEU, DC Extended U Universe movies, since they have been so crap? Based on the performances during the qualification stage, which team is going to win the next World Cup? Um, I don't like to base it on performances in the qualification stage because it's because what 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 you do in qualifying doesn't really mean anything once the 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 the, the real meat and bones happens. Um, so I feel that qualification should not be used. And also beyond that, you've got to look at Brazil, you've got to look at Spain, you've got to look at Portugal, and I think Argentina are outsiders. I don't say Germany because I've already I've already told you Germany are too talented to win the World Cup. So they Germany. And um, Panama are the two teams who definitely have no chance of winning the World Cup. Um, yeah. Um, Lucas Husteki, and this is a Patreon member, so hello to my Patreon member, Lucas Husteki. Hey, HH, do you think that we will ever see an achievement like Mourinho winning the, the Champions League with a club like Porto ever again? The gulf between the top teams from the big leagues and other leagues now seems bigger than ever. Do you think what he did with Porto will remain a historical anomaly. Thanks and keep up the good work. Um, yes, you are right. Um, and this is something I'll be preaching about, that parity, parity, parity. We need more, more parity in, in, this, in this sport. We need, we need more parity in, in football, and nobody wants to listen to me. No one cares. No one cares that Teams are winning league titles by 11, 12, 13 points. No one cares that teams are, are winning the title by early April. No one seems to, 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 to care, which is unfortunate. Um, and I think, especially in the Champions League, I, I mean, are you telling me that okay, it's severe? Or even uh, an Atletico or even a Tottenham can compete with Real Madrid, Barcelona, Banyak in the next four or five years because again they, they, these teams are strong now and they will always get only get stronger and stronger and stronger based on the kind of spending power that they have that these smaller teams don't have. Um Luca, Hello HH I hope all is well. The question this week is if you were the England manager, which twenty two players would you pick for the World Cup and what would you do to get the best out of your squad? So I can't really give you all twenty two, but I can give you players that I feel England have to take. I think England should definitely look at storage, 100%. I think storage is a player who, if you can get the best of him, can give England something. I still believe that, talent-wise, technique-wise, Jack Wilshere is England's best player. And for me, I would get England to sort of build their team around him and what he does. You always know that Harry Hurricane is, is, is quality, but I think it's, it's a mental thing. England have to play as underdogs. They should check their ego at the, at, at, at the door they should peg themselves back and be humble. If they are humble, they play their football, they play 4-4-2, four, four, and just try to play to enjoy themselves without any expectation, they will do well. So I think it is definitely a psychological thing. What has helped, held England back is this notion that they're a big team and they and they should be one of the favorites for a tournament, which has been complete bullcrap. If they just put it to one side, focus on the young players, get them playing nice, exciting, good fo 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 football, with the mixture with the physicality and the passion that England always have, I think then they have a case. So definitely, it's a mental thing of how they mentally prepare for these games. Um, Dave Pepra, Brian Carriage. Sup, HH. I've been a consistent admirer for your content for a while now, and I've got to say, I'm very satisfied. There's a calming realism about you. Thank you. By real, very real. 
Extremely rough. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, my question is this. I'm going to take Cristina off Madrid and shopping for some other team. And I want you to tell me if that team is capable of winning their domestic title and Champions League. Cristina, Cristina on Arsenal. Does a Cristina on Arsenal with Ozan and Mkhitaryan get Arsenal over the top domestically and European-wise? Cristina to PSG. So Cristina for Neymar and Dom Cavani. Do they win the Champions League? Cristina on Napoli. Does Napoli win the Serie A seeing as they just need that final push? And finally, Cristina on Man United. So Cristina for Alexis and Dom Lukaku. Do United win it all? Thanks. Um, Cristina on most teams, I wouldn't say they win the... Listen, you put Cristina and Man United now, right now, they don't win the Champions League. But I think he definitely makes them better. He puts Cristina at PSG. They are capable of winning the Champions League. 100%. Cavani's trash. He's crap. And Cristina's movement, his pinpoints finishing, mixed with the kind of creativity of Verratti, Rabio, Draxler, um, Di Maria, and, 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 so, and so forth, you would be seeing more clinical ability on show, especially in the Champions League. But again, you put um, Cristina at, at Arsenal. Did they win the Champions League? No. I think... But I think definitely he, they would do a lot better in the leagues. I think it, it depends because again, you're 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 thinking about the greatest goal scorer in in history. So if you put the greatest goal scorer in history in most teams, they will do better. But I think you need more than just a great goal scorer. There are, there are many different facets into making a successful team. It's about the team you have, the manager, and your system as well. Um, so this is from Big Rich. Hey HH, what do you think about two leg aggregate formats used in the in Euro Cup basketball? Basically, the Champions League of basketball. I am not aware of that. Um, I'm not aware of that two leg aggregate formats. Um, I'm, I'm not really fully aware of that. But but again, as I've as, as I've always said, um, the so I'm just tilt that down a little bit. Ow. Oops. There we go. Yeah, I mean, as, as I've always said, like, the two-legged affair is something that I've always been a fan of, you know. And I think that the more they continue continue that, the better. So I'm, I'm always a fan of two legs, two, two legs, two legs. So again, I'm not really too sure about that, about the Euro Cup, because I don't really watch Euro Cup basketball that much. But I just I just love um, two legs, especially in the, in the Champions League. <clears throat> Mohamed No. Hey, hi, HH. I heard you talking about strikers on the Hangouts this past Sunday. You said that a striker's only job is scoring goals. So isn't Cristiano the greatest at it? As as I, as I said previously, Cristiano is the greatest goal, goal scorer in the history of the game. So without a doubt, he's... But the thing about him, though, is that he's the greatest goal scorer in the history of the game, but I wouldn't play him as a striker. I think his best position is as a winger because of the diagonal, the kind of space that is ahead of him to run. Hence why Marcelo wouldn't be as effective as a left winger as he's as a, as a left back because of the kind of space that he's, he's given in that position. But as far as just shows goal scoring, Cristiano, he's, 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 he, he's more prolific than any striker I can think of. But is he more prolific than Leno? Uh, from Say, what are your thoughts on Thierry Henry and where do you place him in your top strikers of all time? Henri is the best Premier League player that has ever been in the Premier League. That is my assessment. As far as strikers, that's tough. Because I, I would, I'd put Weah above Henri. I'd put Drogba above Henri. I'd put Batistuta above Henri. But then, but because the thing about it is that when I, when, I, when, I, when I think of striker, I don't think of Henri. I just think of Henri was much more of an all-encompassing player. And I believe that maybe Henri was the guy that also helped, with the help of Ronaldo, obviously, in the 90s, usher in a new kind of striker. And I think it's because of Henri and his success that is where strike like there was more was the matter of strikers where you have to know how to pass the ball, you know how you have to know how to control, you also know how to link play and I say play play make you actually have to be good on the on the ball. So I think I just look of Henri as 
an amazing quality player. I don't really look at him as a striker per se because I think he was much more than just a striker. Um, Patrick Mududa. Um, why do these English pundits come out and say why they flopped? I personally think that they were shite. That's why they never figured it out. And now they want to come on PC Sports without any shame. Keep up the good work and God bless. Um, now I'm not I'm not sure what you're talking about. I think I I I assume you're talking about the the Champions League and the Premier League teams flopping in in the, in the Champions League. And I think I've, all I've always said is that the Premier League is not an elite league, and that has been this false notion based on how much money and the spending power they have. Spending power doesn't equate into quality. What it is is what it is. Just flipping spending power. So, um, yeah, um. Let's see what else do we have? Um, Farid Eldefrawi. Hey, HH, hope you're doing fine. What do you think is the best defensive performance ever by defender? Thanks, love your work. Um, in a game, I mean, what Cannavaro did against Germany in that 2006 game was big because that guy held it down. Although, I would say the best defensive performance I've seen was in San Milan, 2010 second leg against Barcelona. I think Lucio and Samuel Rimba with a man down for most of 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 of, of the game, um, they defended beautifully. Like Barcelona, literally, and this was Guardiola, Pipasson with all the guys, Xavi, Iniesta, so forth, Messi, and they couldn't break them down. So I think that was the best defensive performance I've seen in a game. Best defensive performance in a tournament, 100%. That's why he won the Golden Ball. Was Cannavaro. Um, 2006 World Cup, like literally, that guy was literally one of the main reasons why Italy were able, able to go all the way into the the, the final. Um, Kalem, I think I'm one of the very few people who thinks Mourinho is doing just as well as he should with the United side. In my opinion, if he puts Pep as manager in United and Mourinho as manager of City. Mourinho would be doing just as well if I'm better with that City team and Pep wouldn't even be in the top four with United. What are your thoughts? Um, I am not sure whether Mourinho would... I don't know. No. Mourinho wouldn't do as well as Pep has done with City. He would be doing better than with United, but he would not do as well as Pep has done. And Pep, with these United players, the key thing, if you just give him exactly these United players... I think Pep would, would he would struggle to make top four because again the the players there I don't believe have the ability to keep pass the ball and move the ball around in the way that guys like David Silva, De, De Bruyne, and and so forth can because Guardiola has to have his specific players as if he doesn't have his specific players his game plan just doesn't work and those United play, I mean was Carry give me a break. Uh, Enough. Okay. Um, hey, HH. Last week, I made an error in asking my question. This is from Yared. I meant to ask who you thought the bigger club was between Man City and Tottenham. Not United and Tottenham. My bad. Um, the bigger club? Um, yeah. It has to be Man City. In terms of the trophies they've won. And their profile and the kind of players that they, they, they can attract. I think that's a, one, a big thing is your attracting power. If you're a young up and coming star, would you choose Man City or would you choose Tottenham? Most guys, 10 times out of 10, they would choose Man City. Unless you're going for Tottenham's time because you want to go away from the spotlight. But if you really want to be in the spotlight of like, I am the main guy, the number one, number one, Man City are the guys that you, that, that you go for. Um, so yeah, so Man City, I would say they are the, the, the bigger team. Uh, ben Joel I think I'm not the only one who thinks Chelsea were robbed at the new camp had Alonso got in the penalty and Piquet rightfully been sent off we would have had a much greater chance of going through had it went to 2-1 I also thought Chelsea were the better team over the, the two legs and had it not been for Courtois we would have been in the tie for much longer than we were what are your thoughts um, false um, Chelsea did do well they definitely played well and I think they, they definitely played well than I thought they would in, in the second leg but I believe that at the end of the day, it's called match management. Barcelona wanted Chelsea to have the ball. They wanted Chelsea to, to come at them because that was part of their, their game plan. They got the early goal. They, I remember before um, um, 
Bas- when when Bas- Barcelona scored, all through those minutes up until Barcelona scored, Chelsea did not touch the ball. They didn't flip it and touch the ball. So once Barcelona got the goal, then they said, okay, let's just relax and let's allow Chelsea to, to come into the game. So, yeah, for me, Chelsea, they played well, but I thought Barcelona had a game plan over two legs, which, which worked, which executed, and which came to fruition. So you cannot really deny that, despite Chelsea actually putting a, a very good account of themselves, but you've got to take your chances, man. Um, James Lombardo. Hey, HH, do you think Mark Hughes is the right man to keep Southampton in the Premier League and potentially to FA Cup success? And if not, who do you think they should have appointed? Also, do you think Jimmy Carragher should be fired by Sky Sports? Yeah, I think Carragher should be fired by Sky Sports because if you're going to sack um, Richard Keyes and Andy Gray, you should also sack Carragher because what Carragher did was, was worse. And... Mark Hughes, potentially. I think, I mean, it's... it's. I mean, I think Pulis is a guy who, who got robbed. I mean, if it was between... If, if I say, if pick somebody who should keep Southampton in the Premier League, I would go for Pulis. I think Mark Hughes, I don't really view him as a guy who can work well with keeping teams in the Premier League. In the same sense, like like a Sam Allardyce can or a Tony Pulis can. And I think Mark Hughes needs like a meeting. I think Mark Hughes with, with, with Everton... Or even Watford would be very interesting. But um, him with Southampton, I don't know. Especially with a team that's struggling. I don't think he's, he's the right fit. Um, I think it's either a purely someone like that should should, should, should be doing it. Um, what does he have? Destiny. No, no, Danny. Enjoying your videos and awesome personality. Thank you. It's a shame that Uncle Mo gave up on his team. Since football is changing a lot and players are, are changing, we are no longer seeing specialists, players who are good at doing something specific and it always benefits the team. Instead, we get a lot of players who are good enough at everything but not good enough to stand out amongst the rest. Is this a good thing in football? Christina is known for his extraordinary physical attributes. Messi is known for being the dribbling, disrespectful, ugly monster. Would you rather have specialists who do the same repetitive motions or good players but are, are almost average? Um, I think when you're building a team, you need all sorts. You need you need all sorts when you're when when you're building it it's it's it, it team and for me, um, I want a team of players who are good and average at everything, and I want specialists because you want to have a nice balance of quality players who do the basics right, and those specialists who are good at free kicks, good at dribbling, really good at tackling, good at passing, good at creativity. So then. You have a team and a squad who are built for different situations. So it's it's a balance of um, wanting to have both, pretty much. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. Um, from Nati. Hey, half up. Who do you think wins? Barcelona or City in the Champions League? Um, I'll have to roll with Barcelona. Although City would cause them issues, I just think that Barcelona's de- 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 defensive stability... And them having Messi is the perfect balance to be able to navigate City over two legs. Because again, for, for City, can the defence stop uh, Messi, Cannibal and Dembele? I doubt it. Uh, Dylan Holmes. Hey, HH, what are your thoughts on the GTA series? And which do you enjoy more, GTA 4 or 5? And when do you think we'll see G- GTA 6? To be honest, um, I didn't play GTA 5 because I just didn't really agree with some of the creative choices in the game, you know. Um, so it just was for personal reasons. The best thing in the GTA series, I mean, I'll probably do a video about it. It's Vice City. Vice City, Vice City is one of the greatest games I've ever, ever made, hands down. Easily one of the greatest games ever made. Um, and so, yeah, GTA 3. And for me, I think it would go Vice City, GTA 3. GTA 4, those ones. And I think just the concept of GTA, again, I will do this in a separate video. The concept of GTA is just absolutely brilliant. It's, it's an absolutely incredible, brilliant, brilliant game. Um, Manifred Gunza. Uh, after Montella's masterclass at Old Trafford over Mourinho, does that at least earn him a suspension from the Brick Academy and put Mourinho in Class B? Potentially, potentially. And over two legs, do you think Liverpool or City could beat Barcelona, Bayern, Juve or Madrid? Um... Neither of them could beat Barcelona. City could potentially beat Bayern Munich. I don't think Liverpool could beat could beat Bayern Munich. They could both beat Juventus, and I'm not sure that Liverpool would be able to beat Madrid. 
Although it will be close, and I think City would be able to beat my Madrid man, 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 over two, two legs. Um, so I think this is PQ Disney. Hello, HH. How highly do you rate each of these strikers in their peak? Van Van Pan Percy? Pretty good. I mean, I would say tier 3 going into potentially tier, tier 2. Aguero, tier 2. Manzugic, tier 3. Storage, just creeping into tier 2. Just creeping into, in, into tier 2. Um, Shane Schubert. Considering the uncertainty surrounding Nurse's lingering injury, when would he start seriously considering starting to Stegen at the World Cup? Um, it just if Neuer is back next month, then it's fine. But I think if you're going into May or even June and he's only coming back in there, then I think they have to start thinking about okay, let's roll with Ter Stegen because again, you have to have a guy who has much practice as great as Neuer is for him not to. I mean, when how long has this guy guy been out and like when is he going to come back? So for him not to be. So to be out for so long, it's 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 crazy, man. It is absolutely crazy. Um, where do you rank Ter Stegen as a keeper? I think he's very good. <laughs> you know, I think he's been very, very, very good. I think I'll definitely put him tier two. You know, I'm. He's probably top five. You know, you, you look at the hair. You say Noya. <sighs> Maybe it's top four, top four because I was I was about to say Kotoa, but I can't say Kotoa now any anymore. Although you've got Oblak, you've got um. Edison, you've got um, Allison from from Roma, so yeah, so maybe top five, top five, you know. Uh, so okay. remember, guys, I, I can only read one question per person, one question per per, per person, man. Um, or right, Pierre Richard Michel. Hello, HH. My question this week: I feel that the last eight of the Champions League is very predictable for two reasons. First, we had a bad luck to have Real versus PSG first round. If PSG would have played, let's say, a Shakhtar or Basel or a Sevilla, they could have passed and also Mani completely flopped versus a side they should could have be beaten. But on the flip side, I think the last four will be epic. And also, I feel PSG should go after Pogba. I think it will never work for him as Man United. And I feel that's what's missing with Paris. A midfielder who can take the ball up, get long shots and really bust the middle. Let's say a swap. Verazzi for, for Pogba, what's it take? Keep up the rate work, boss. Um, I don't think Pogba at PSG would really change that that much. I think what PSG need is... Um, they need a better ma manager. But even if I say that's a better manager, I... You know what? It's 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 still... Uh, I, you know, it's it still doesn't roll, roll for me. I just, there's, there's just something about this team that says to me that uh, it's, I don't think it's going to work out. That's just me, me, me being real. I just don't think that it's gonna work out. This pitch project, I just, I just think it's, it's a, a dud. Um, and for me, and I think this is it's very predict pretty predictable. And yeah, I, I mean, with regards to PSG, nah, don't give them easy teams. If you're amazing, to be the best, I think it was Rick Flair that said it, to be the best, you could have beat the best. And for PSG, you have to you have to beat the best. If they had beaten Real Madrid, they would have been one of their clear favorites. So if you really are what you say you are, you should be able to face any team at any point and beat them. And beat whoever comes in your way. Simple as that. Alright guys, that is it for this week. Uh, remember to get your question answered. Just send me, uh, me an email by going to the website, halfoffootballhealth.com. You scroll down to the contact us form. And send me any questions, football or non-football races. Stay true and stay black. Peace. Thank you for watching this video. Think about pledging and become a Half of Football Hot patron. Pledge an amount each month and gain access to exclusive videos from your boy, the Football Hot, for more analysis. Peace.